Good morning, everybody. Uh, let's talk about something I saw on the internet the other day. It is. It was extremely entertaining. I like Chuck Sullivan of the Karate Connection, and I like Viking Samurai's channel. Although Viking Samurai isn't the most. Um, what, what's the word I'm going to use? Um, he's not the most erudite presenter. Okay, um, but he does. He, he does have a lot of pull. He gets a lot of really interesting people on his channel, and. Um, um, he he lets him talk. He asks questions, um, but but I feel like he he doesn't ask. Uh, there's questions he could be asking that he could get into that he doesn't get into. Uh, but whatever, very good channel, very entertaining pr um, channel, and the Chuck Sullivan interview was incredibly entertaining. And an unexpected thing happened, like it turned into Gonzo journalism because. He was talking about the 1967 Bruce Lee demonstration, a very famous demonstration where, you know, uh, <coughs> he squares off and Victor Moore has to, you know, block his front hand. And um, Victor Moore has said over and over and over again that <coughs> he blocked those punches, although it looks like on the tape that he isn't blocking a single punch. Like... He's nowhere near blocking a punch. It looks like the punch gets there and comes back, and and then the hand flaps up afterward. But I don't, you know. He claims I blocked those punches, and then I threw punches at Bruce Lee, and he couldn't block him. Any, I I mean I mean he talks about sparring him or or something. I mean, he said this over and over again. I think he really and truly believes it. And Victor Moore is one of those guys uh, that constantly tells you about how wonderful and awesome he was and undefeated he was and all the amazing things he did. Um, you know, he, he talks about his amazingness all the time and how everybody knew me, everybody knew me. And Viking Samurai asked him, so, you know, what about Vic Moore? He goes, Vic who? Like, he had no idea who Vic Moore was. He was there for that demonstration. He's, I just knew him as a guy from the audience. I didn't know who he was. Which makes you think he wasn't as famous and awesome and well-regarded as he thinks he was. And um, I got about 14 viewers, that, that subscribers that watch on a regular basis. And I know, I know some of you by name. <clears throat> and b uh, before you say, well, maybe it was racism. Maybe Chuck Sullivan is, is Chuck Sullivan is racist. I really don't think so. Um, he even admits in the same interview that he felt like Steve Sanders was held back by prejudice, and it was a different time and place. And he says even people who thought they weren't uh, racially biased were raci racially biased subconsciously. Okay, so. Um, I, I don't think that's what influences Chuck Sullivan. I think he, he honestly never knew who Vic Moore was, never followed his career, never came to his attention. But um, he says, well, you know, he says, there were 18,000 people there, man. You know, uh, somebody would have said something. I was there. I was there right in the front row. I would have volunteered to block that puncher. He said, nobody threw punches at Bruce Lee that day. And he says, nobody could have blocked his punches. And then he even demonstrated how action is faster than reaction and how, you know, he basically, Chuck Sullivan says, even at he's 91, he can still um, throw a, a punch like that at a younger person. He says, put your hand up and pull it back. When you see me move, he can throw a non-telegraphic explosive punch uh, like Bruce Lee did and like I can and many of you can who study that principle of, you know, not cocking back, um, especially if you put your dominant side forward and, uh, you know, you move the hand before you move the body and et cetera, et cetera. He says you don't cock it back, it cocks on the way there and it still hits cocked. In other words, he's saying it still hits with power, with efficacy because even though you're not winding back, you're not using a big hip rotation, you initiate the punch with the hand and your body follows. You've got the forward momentum, you've got torque, and you've got focus on impact. 
Um, and Viking Samurai is like, well, okay, man. You know, like Viking Samurai is very, very Californian guy. Um, he, he, even if he's not in California, he gives off that California vibe, right? And Viking Samurai calls Vic Moore up on the phone <laughs> during the interview and watch the interview watch the interview and there's a point where Chuck Sullivan actually starts laughing at, at what Vic Moore is saying he's like ha, 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 ha. like like it's like it's the dumbest thing he ever heard and you know Vic Moore claims that um Ed Parker has the real footage, but they they never released it. He goes, "What do you mean release?" He says, "There were eighteen thousand people there." You know? <laughs> it doesn't turn into an argument, but I can see how it kind of could have. And Chuck Sullivan even says, "Like, I think he really believes this, but he believes what he what he wishes he would have done." You know, sometimes it does happen that people sometimes remember an event for them. They remember what they wish would have happened or, you know, what they imagined happened and not necessarily the real thing that actually happened. And all I can say is, yeah, I mean, he was in, I don't know if there were actually 18,000 people there. That seems like a gigantic number. Um, <clears throat> but there was a, sta a sports complex, a stadium for filled with competitors, spectators, judges, officials, and if what was shown on the film and what was written in the magazines was um, not the truth, somebody would have spoken up. Somebody would have especially spoken up around 1973 after Bruce Lee died and, you know, people were gushing all, all over him and remembering him like a martyr and, um, there was a lot of someone could have made a lot of money or gotten a lot of notoriety coming out in public and arguing that case and getting corroborating uh, evidence and testimonies and things like that and uh, it just didn't happen and it didn't happen in the 70s the 80s the 90s the early 2000s the 2010s and you know only recently is Vic Moore publicly saying these things so um yeah it was very entertaining, and I believe Chuck Norris, I mean Chuck Sullivan, I also believe Vic Moore, like I believe he thinks that's what's happened, contrary to the experience of an entire stadium filled with people who say it, you know, no, no man, that didn't happen, you know, um, I, I kind of don't believe that, um, if you have a demonstration like that, and he, it was also the demonstration where he demonstrated the one-inch punch, right? I refuse to believe that um, if a demonstration that pulled members of the audience that were legitimate martial artists occurred, and I, th I think Chuck Sullivan said that, you know, him and Danny Nasanto also put on gear and quote according to him really started whacking each other they demonstrated continuous full contact sparring um you know that that if that captured everybody's excitement then if vic moore got up there and sparred or scored punches on bruce lee that would have even been even more uh, exciting and thrilling and that footage would have been even more valuable and you know, it would have captured not just the martial arts crowd imagination, but probably the public imagination, you know. Um, in essence, they were demonstrating kickboxing about a decade early at, at that demonstration. And, you know, uh, if it would have turned into Bruce Lee versus Vic Moore, it would have... It, man... If you think about Jeet Kune Do, right, they did include some grappling in their practice and may have in their sparring. I don't know how often they went to the ground, but they had an MMA format available to them and their students. In other words, we could have had a, a UFC in 1969 or 1970. Y'all feel me? Y'all feel me? Okay. And, um... On a divergent note, uh, 
uh, Pancratian, uh, I think, it, I, hopefully I don't pronounce his name wrong, but Jim Arvanitas, I think his name is Jim, um, <clears throat> you know, my friend Jose Gonzalez tell, told me that he publicly uh, had an exhibition match with Jeff Smith and two other nationally rated American black belts under his type of rules and um, took them down and submitted them, you know. And this, this would have been sometime in the 70s, okay. Uh, Jose, my, my friend Jose Gonzalez, uh, Grandmaster Jose Gonzalez, is about to retire mostly from his day job and reduce his workload heavily and focus on himself and, and some martial arts projects. That would be a great video. You could just set up a camera or get your laptop or something and just record it and post it on YouTube and talk about it and talk about some of the things you've seen. Uh, I would certainly recommend your channel and promote your channel. Uh, you could do that all the way from New Jersey. I'm here in Missouri, but I am a Jersey boy at heart. But I'm also a Missouri guy at heart, right? But uh, there's, there's just that Chuck Sullivan interview. He's 91 years old. He's active. He's bright and bright and alert. He's 100% there mentally, mostly there physically. Yeah, I've seen videos of him teaching and stuff. And I'm, yeah, of course, he's 91 years old. He's not going to be doing jump spinning back kicks anytime soon. But there he was. There he is still teaching and contributing and I, I want him to tell all these stories and all these experiences before he passes away you know and again none of us know when we're gonna when we're gonna go we don't know um, so you know I could pass away tomorrow I could live another can you imagine if nanotech technology and all kinds of these wonderful new medical developments come around and uh, something happens where I have a 150 or 200 year lifespan, right? But even if that was a potential, I could get hit by a truck or a meteor could fall on me, right? So um, those of us that have been around a little bit and have seen something should tell our stories. And who knows? Maybe at some point, somewhere, you know, if these... If someone downloads this and records this and it's archived somewhere, if there's something I say of use, who? what if 200 years from now someone looks at it and says, hey, why don't I try that? It's a form of uh, time capsule. So I'm really grateful Chuck Sullivan said what he said. I think there's going to be a lot of responses to it. And um, uh, Jose, if you're watching... You know, start making some videos, man. Start making some videos. You've told me so many things, and I don't know, you know, what you want released to the public or not. You've talked about facts about Jeff Smith, Ron Van Cleef. You've talked about pro boxers. You've ta talked about Master Carter. Um, you've talked about the mafia scene in Trenton. You've talked about the martial arts scene in Trenton and Hamilton. Uh, there is so much out there right uh, that old guard like me would love to see and hear again and recorded and I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot of younger people a lot of things are coming back have you all noticed a lot of things sort of have re-evolved okay uh, for example um, I look around at in the gym and I see the hairstyles and kind of an 80s mullet is back with some of the men some of the 70s style hair is back uh, with some of the women and uh, I think it's wonderful um, and uh, you know uh, I listen to some of the newer music coming out some of the newer music sounds a bit like uh, some of the rock in the 60s and 70s and some of the blues and then there's completely new things hip-hop continues to develop rhythm and blues certain things are making a comeback and certain new things are coming and they're intermingling and it feels like people are hungry for new information and old information so if you have an interesting story share it all right 
and I wish you all well I've got a couple of projects that I'm working on and um, I've committed to which I'll share in another video all right